Hi guys, what's up? I'm Michael from Virtual Shape Research and this is the third part of working with the VSR tools in Rhino. The task for this session is to fill a five-sided area with surfaces where the Rhino patch function didn't really succeed. An example result for this in SOLIDWORKS can be seen in the upper area here. When checking it with the zebra function, you can see that the surface has a pretty nice shape. So the first thing which comes into your mind when trying to fill a five-sided area with VSR tools is probably the multiplane function. The problem here is that the hole is pre-stretched and this isn't a good input for the function which is therefore not delivering a good result. The multiplane works best if the input edges have at least roughly the same length. So I want to keep it in this area and therefore I will need to cover the right here with another simple four-sided surface. The easiest solution for this would probably be a surface blend. But when aligning the side of the blend you see that the control points of both sides don't really fit together. The reason for this is the different parametrization of the input surfaces. Both sides have very unequal distributed control points. Instead of adding shapes and making the blend surface more complex, I want to show you a different way here. So I want to create a surface between these three ones, which should mainly have the shape of the right one. As this surface is trimmed, I can't use it as input for the surface approximation function. Instead, I'm selecting it as global projection base in the VSR shape options. I'm now creating a new surface from the four edges using the surface as projection target. In this case I'm not really interested in the deviation, I just want the rough shape and nice equally distributed control points. The surface just created is selected because the keep selected option in the VSR shape options is active. This way I can use control point modeling now without explicitly having to select it. I'm now using the extrapolate option to get my surface at the place where I need it. I want a matching to the surface to the right, but also curvature continuity on the top and the bottom. So I need three control point rows for the top, three for the bottom and one to have some freedom in the shape to be able to match good to the right. I'm simply typing 6 on my keyboard to get degree 6 and therefore my needed 7 rows. I'm choosing the same for the other direction as I know the control point distribution of the top and bottom surface might cause the need of some flexibility. Now I'm starting VSR surface align to match the surface against the other three surfaces at the same time. Two input edges are found automatically, only the third one down here is a bit too far away, so I have to select it manually. I'm now setting all sides to curvature as I want the best possible input surface for the upcoming multi-blend. As position is the most important continuity, I'm using the integrated matching analysis to ensure the deviation is not higher than about a thousandth of a millimeter. The remaining hole has a good size now, so let's try the multi-blend function. I'm switching off the control point display in the VSR shape options as I now want to visually inspect the quality of the result. For that I'm using the VSR light lines. As you can see the light lines look pretty jaggy so I'm adjusting the Rhino mesh settings to get a better display. Calling the multi-blend function again. 
checking the result with the light lines, you can see that the quality is not satisfying in the left area here. The reason for this is not the multiplane function, but the input quality. The surface itself is pretty simple, but it has a trimmed edge and that one is much more complex than it needs to be. To fix this, you can use the edge approximation function, which is available via the right mouse button on the surface approximation icon. The upper edge has three spans, but reapproximating it with one span is possible without a noteworthy deviation. For this input, the arc length option provides the best result. The lower edge is just slightly more complicated. It requires a degree of 4 to get the wanted deviation. So, going for the multiplane function once more. And now the resulting light lines are just the way we want them to be. Instead of visually inspecting the quality of your model, you can also use the global matching analysis. It checks all found surface transitions and shows you if there should be any violation of the values you defined. So you can see here that the solid edge example has a gap of 0.05 mm, while our result has just run around a thousandth of a millimeter. That's it for this session. You can download the test version with a 3 weeks test license from www.virtualshape.com. Thank you for watching.